Right, so today I'm taking a little break from the projects to work on our personal daily driver vehicle because it didn't start the other day. So this troubleshooting will be for a known good running driving cranks doesn't start no fuel situation. So this is mostly going to be for something that was already working and stopped working and this is something that was sitting in the driveway overnight and came out to start it and it didn't run. It wasn't something we were driving and it shut down. It was sitting parked overnight in the driveway, wouldn't start up the next morning. The first thing I do is put a battery charger on it because if you're going to be doing a lot of cranking the battery might die especially when it's cold. So one thing you can do right away is to check for fuel pressure if you don't have a mechanical fuel pressure gauge. A lot of times the fuel rail has a Schrader valve on it. So you can just lift up the cover. A lot of the fuel lines will have something like this on there which looks kind of like a valve stem on a tire. Push down in the center of it and you can see there's no fuel spraying out so that means I don't have any fuel pressure on this line right here. And even if there was a little bit of pressure left, like residual pressure, it would still leak a little bit. So nothing came out of that one. So that tells me that I have no pressure at the rail. There's nothing there. Especially when you're cranking it for a while, the injectors are going to be running the extra fuel out of the rail into the engine. So you'll basically run this rail empty and it won't leak anything out. So there you can see it just cranks. It doesn't try to fire, it doesn't do anything, it just cranks. So next thing I want to do is check the fuel pump fuse. Open up your fuse box. A lot of times there's a diagram on the back side of it or you can find it online. So the fuel pump fuse for this truck is this number 20 fuse right here. It's a 20 amp fuse. So you can use a fuse puller or a needle nose or something and pull it out. So you can see that little V shape, U shape metal in there. That's all connected. If it's blown, it'll actually be split and sometimes it'll have like a black burn mark in there. Now if the fuse is good, next thing we want to check is the relay. So on this truck I know that this is my fuel pump relay and you can see that I have a couple identical matching relays in there. So I can actually use one of these relays to put in here to test it to make sure that that actually works. This relay here is going to be for my AC compressor. It's winter right now so I don't need that guy. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead, I'll take this one out, I'm going to take this one and put it in there and I'll go try to start the truck. So now you see that the truck started, so that would tell me that my relay was bad. So just to verify, let's switch these back. We'll put the other one back in there. We'll start it up again. You can see that it fired because it used the remaining fuel out of the rail and then it died and it wouldn't start back up. So that tells me that the relay is actually bad. So now I can get a new relay. So next in the troubleshooting process, once we verify that there's still no fuel at the rail, the fuse is good, the relay is good, next we're going to be looking at possibly a black fuel filter or having to drop the tank to put a fuel pump in it. Some vehicles don't have an inline fuel filter or some filters are in the tank. If it has an inline fuel filter, they're pretty cheap and usually pretty easy to change. But a fuel filter to go from unblocked to blocked overnight while it's sitting out running, I don't think would be that common. Or you'd still be getting some pressure to the rail, it just wouldn't be enough to start the vehicle. Next I would go through the process of starting to look at the, the fuel pump assembly, verifying the wiring using something like this, a digital multimeter. This is one that I like, it's pretty cheap. You can pick them up locally at like Walmart, I think they still carry them. And it has a really easy to understand switch setup on it, sort of like battery load testing. And then really you'd want to be using this DC voltage setting. So you'd turn it on to DC volts and then you could test for power. Because now we know that the fuse is passing power, the relay is passing power, but now we want to make sure that the wiring is passing power to the fuel pump. I had a 2005 Escalade once that this happened to, and it actually started to melt the ground wire on the plug, and the ground pin pulled out of the plug. So the fuel pump was still good. It gave me these same symptoms. So the power was going to the plug, but it wasn't passing through the plug to the pump. So in that situation, I was able to just replace the wiring pigtail that plugged into the pump, and that was fine. If you can verify with your multimeter, that that plug that plugs into the fuel hat is still getting power, then you'd be looking at replacing the fuel pump. Now there's some situations where you could actually have fuel to the rail but not getting through the injectors. That would be a topic for a different video. But hopefully this one helped. Just a real quick basic run through of kind of what to look for. Probably took me five minutes to figure out what was going on with that truck. And in this case, if I was stuck and that's my only vehicle, I could just take that AC compressor relay, put it in my fuel pump relay, and drive to the store to buy a new relay. If not, you can actually stick a piece of wire in there to bypass the relay, and I'm actually going to do a video on that, and that'll be the next one. So thanks for watching.